So it is true that silver is becoming more of an industrial metal, even yeah. though production is greater over the past 30, 40 years. Um, a larger and larger percentage of that is going to industrial use. And that's a good thing because it helps society, you know, whether it's EVs or solar panels. And we have, you know, you're right. My money's where my roof is and my money's where my <laughs> car is because we have an EV vehicle and w- which uses a uh, battery that has silver in it. And we have solar panels on our roof. So it is true that that's happening. It's also true that silver does not do well in recessions. Yeah. Um, the only metal that does is gold. Gold usually rises in a recession. Silver, unfortunately, usually falls. So if you fear a recession is here or it's going to be very bad, then silver may not be your prime investment. Or we may have to wait until that's over. Um, but I'm not going to invest that way. Um because we don't know what's going to happen. And I remember uh, people being very insistent three years ago, uh, and I was among that crowd, that the yield curve had inverted in the last six recessions uh, were predicted by the yield curve inverting. And that obviously hasn't happened. Um, now, it still may happen, but you've been waiting for three years. And, you know, if silver was at 19 and now it's at 20 what is it, 28 or something, 20. 20, uh, you know, you've kind of missed out by not buying then. So um, I did buy when silver sold off in the COVID crash in March of 2020. The sell-off was incredible. Um, to me, it was ridiculous because the gold-silver ratio, many people remember, went to over 120. And yeah. it had never been that high in all of history, in all of recorded history, the gold silver ratio had never been that high. I I was very public about it. I said this is ridiculous. I'm jumping in, and I bought silver at thirteen dollars and five cents. I think it was. So, you know, you could say I love big dips, and I you cannot lie. But <laughs> but I I really did want to capitalize on that because the the oversold nature of that was incredible. Now, if you look at what happened there, and this is a good example of what I think you can expect from silver going forward. I've documented all of its spikes since the 1970s. There's been a, well, a more than a dozen of them. Uh, the average of those spikes is basically um, a double. If you include the 1970s, it's 154%, uh, all in a relatively short period of time, 12 months or less. The average length of a spike is seven months. Quick break here. This episode is brought to you by West Red Lake Gold Mines. Now, if you know nothing about West Red Lake Gold Mines, let me tell you one thing. This company was founded on the back of a transaction where they purchased the Madsen Mine in Northwestern Ontario in an area called the Red Lake Gold District, which to date has produced around 30 million ounces of gold from some of the richest gold deposits in the world. Now, what they paid for this mine versus what they got has led legendary mining entrepreneur Frank Justra to call this transaction the deal of the decade. And Bob Moriarty, founder of 321 Gold, was recently on my show calling West Red Lake Gold Mines one of the two most undervalued gold companies in Canada. If you're curious why these individuals are so excited about West Red Lake Gold Mines, hit the link below to learn more. Now back to the episode. But if you go back to the COVID spike, what, what happened there, we had the crash. And if you remember, um, gold and silver really bounced out of that. And so did yeah. mining stocks. So I bought uh, silver twice that month toward the end of March. Um, and I just really loaded up on mining stocks, which is another story. But um, mm-hmm. when I bought silver, um, it was, you know, 13 something. And Silver rose from that point, it's low, uh, within five months had risen 140%. 140% in five months on that bounce. Yeah. Gold rose 40%. So silver was, what is that, triple almost what gold did during that time frame, during that run. It mm-hmm. also tells you, remember, we were in a recession then, and gold and silver bounced, silver more than gold. So... 
I don't always count that, you know, a recession is a period to avoid silver. Mm -hmm. um, I think gold and silver will run in any type of fear, uncertainty, crisis, whatever it is, especially a monetary crisis. If we get something really nasty with the debt or our currency or whatever, and remember all, all currencies right now are a fiat, every single one, none are backed by any commodity, including gold, for the first time in recorded history. So if we get some kind of, you know, nasty thing with that, you better expect that gold and silver are going to run and silver will outperform gold. I think most of the audience knows that silver yeah. historically has outperformed gold. It may not at first, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now, right? Um, so, uh, but by the end of it, by the end of the bull market, whatever that is, however long it is, Silver has historically outperformed gold, and I, there's no reason to expect that won't happen again, and I'm investing accordingly.